Hey everyone, welcome back to Research Design and Analysis 1. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a non-parametric test called a chi-square goodness of fit. Now a chi-square test, whether it's goodness of fit or test of independence, is a non-parametric test based on nominal data to see if the outcomes we have differed from what we expected by chance. So we have bins or categories that we're dropping information and we're seeing perhaps if they are all the same across the board or if one of them is more frequent or if the rate for different kinds of things differs than a sample or population that came before us. You might think of asking a question like yes or no, Democrat or Republican or Libertarian, male, female, transgender, as that nominal kind of category that chi-square can test. You might also think of cleaning up your room, right? If you've got a big pile of stuff everywhere, you have different bins for where those things can go. This thing goes in my closet, this thing goes in my drawer, this goes in dirty laundry, this goes in recycling, this goes in trash, this goes to my little brother, right? This is still a nominal variable, where does this object go? And we wanna see if what we find is different than what we expected. You might also think of Charlie Brown in the Halloween episode, right? Remember when they go to the door trick-or-treating and every kid says, I got jelly beans, I got a candy bar, and poor Charlie Brown says, I got rocks. Clearly, what he got, his outcome, or observed, was different than what he expected. So in that kind of chi-square analysis, Charlie Brown had something quite unique. Now, if we wanna run a chi-square goodness of fit test, we go up to analyze, and non-parametrics is about halfway down. We wanna do legacy dialogues and chi-square. There are other kinds of non-parametric tests here that you might learn about in upper level statistics classes, like a Krushka-Wallace test, Friedman test, Mann-Whitney-U test. Um, these are other non-parametric options. Right now, we want a chi-square for nominal data. So we select chi-square and we're gonna run our first test um, on the variable sex, which for students in our case included individuals who reported as male and individuals who reported as female. There was an op another option, other, um, for individuals who are transgender, male to female, female to male, don't identify with any particular gender, but in our particular data set, no one selected those options. They only picked male and female. So what we're gonna be looking at first is to see if the sex of Psych 2231 students or um, from Miami, Psych 293 students, differed from um, what we'd expect by chance. If we don't have anything predetermined, we would expect 50-50, 50% male, 50% female. And so chi-square sets up to have those expected values be chance probabilities. We can change that and I'll show you that in step two. But for right now, we're gonna leave those expected categories equal. You'll also wanna to go to options and select descriptives. So it will tell you the number of people in the sample and the number of options that were in the data set from the students' responses. Click OK, and let's look at the output. With this um, chi-square goodness of fit test, it tells us the sample size. It tells us a mean and standard deviation for the group, but these aren't really useful to us and we do not want to report them in our statistical test because they're not too good for nominal data. And it does tell us the minimum and maximum values. Again, we had people who selected male and people who selected female. So we're seeing a very small range of possible scores on this variable. Then it tells us the descriptive statistics. If you are reporting this in a manuscript, you need to tell people at least the values that you got, how many males and females, so how many total, the expected, right? If we set 50-50 out of 226 people, we expect 113 here and 113 here. And so this is what you'd wanna report. It also calculates for you the residual. If you were calculating a chi-square by hand, you would take the frequencies you observed minus the frequencies expected and then square that and divide it by the frequencies expected to calculate this chi-square value. So that residual gives you an idea if the group is under what you expected, it'll be negative, or over what you expected, it'll be positive. 
Then we need to report our inferential statistic, and that is given here. This is the chi-square test, which again, for goodness of fit, is seeing whether what you observed is different than the proportions you expected. Chi-square is a very low power test. All it can tell you is there's a difference somewhere. It basically goes, yep, that's different. Yep, that's different. Nope, not different. It does not tell you anything about the pattern. You have to know your concepts and interpret this for your reader. So after you report the math, you might have to translate it back to English and tell people what the pattern looks like. But if this chi-square value is big, it means there's a big difference um, from what you expected to happen and what actually happened. And you'll have a very low probability. Again, we usually use an alpha of 0.05 unless there's a reason to be more precise or restrictive. And so in this case, our probability value here is less than our standard. This is higher. So we would reject our null hypothesis and say that there does appear to be a difference, right? Remembering that by chance, we could only see this outcome probably a small amount of times if the null hypothesis was actually true. So in this case, we'd want to go back and tell people then, yes, there appears to be a difference. There were more females, bigger residual, and fewer males than we expected by chance. In other words, this does not match a 50-50 distribution. There were more females and fewer males in a psychology class. So by chance distributions, we'd say, this is meaningful, there's a difference. But you're probably thinking, wait a minute, professor, it's been a long time since I saw a 50-50 distribution in my psychology class. And national standards show us that in today's society, psychology majors are often 70 to 80% female. Right? So we could actually test whether our class is different from what we know for psychology majors. And this is where we can go back to our non-parametric test and set up a different probability than chance. Right? So if we go back to chi-square, we're still testing sex, but instead of making it 50-50, maybe we think, hey, I bet it's about 75% female. So we can tell it, choose different proportion values. And we can either put these in based on the percentage we expect or the actual count of people. Most students find it easier to put in the percentages. So if we're thinking psychology classes tend to be about 75% female, we want to put in 25 for male and 75 for female for it to compare to. It does matter what order you list those probabilities in. So be careful about which group you listed first and put your expectation for that group first. So if we think that psychology majors will be about 25% male, we will add that and 75% female, we will add that. And again, we probably ought to have a category for um, transgender individuals and those that don't identify as distinctly male or female. We just didn't happen to have any of those in our data set. So for learning purposes, we're gonna simplify it to 25, 75. But remember to be inclusive in your everyday life and your thoughts about gender as not just being binary. All right. so. After we've set up those percentages, we click OK, and we will see how our chi-score value changes then. Same sample, same range of scores, same observed values. But our expectancies here then were not 50-50, it's 25% and 75%. So 25% of 226 is 56.5, 75% of 226 is 169.5. So you'll notice those residuals change to much smaller than they were in the previous case because we are getting closer to what we expected. So are students in design and analysis any different than psychology majors if we assume a 25-75 distribution? Well, this time, no. The chi-square value is small. The probability value is big. So we do not see a difference between students in the psych class that we sampled versus our expectations based on percentages. Again, if you're writing up chi-square in a manuscript, you wanna report at least observed and expected. And it's helpful to put in the actual percents too. That sometimes helps people see what you're doing and your professor may require you to put in the percents. And then this is where you get your chi-square value. 
where you would say chi-square with one degree of freedom and 226 for my sample size equals 0.48 comma p equals 0.48 or maybe p is greater than 0.05 so that you're showing it's not significant it's not in the critical region there isn't a difference between this class and the other psychology majors we compared to hopefully this helps you get started on chi-square goodness of fit in the next segment we will look at a chi-square test of independence which has two nominal variables and you want to see if one category maybe male and female is related to some other category like smoking or ice cream choice or seat belt wearing or particular favorite movie types, right? So with a chi-square test of independence, we'll have two factors, one that we'll put in columns and one that we'll put in rows to see if those concepts relate. Thanks.